Well, it's a beautiful morning amongst the redwoods out here, and today I'm going to be uh, purging this sand filter located here. The tanks are right over here. So first thing I like to do is open up the uh, septic tank and sump tank, pull the effluent filter, and uh, get that rinsed out. And uh, then I'm going to open up the boxes here and prepare for the purge. I'm going to give you guys some tips on uh, purging whether it's a sand filter or a pressure distribution system, mound system, at grade, anything that has uh, a pump that's pressurizing uh, laterals. Uh, just give you guys a few tips on um, how I like to uh, make sure we get the best purge possible on that. So let's get started. All right, so I have the uh, tanks opened up and this is the inlet side of the septic tank. It has a nice healthy scum layer and if you've never opened a septic tank before um, they are going to appear to be full that's just how they operate they're going to be full to the elevation of the outflow of the septic tank where you would maybe find an effluent filter like this this is a Zabel filter probably a Zabel A100 and something you also may need to do if you're going to purge your septic system is add some water to your sump tank uh, prior to purging just so that there's enough water in that sump tank for you to complete the purge of your system um, sometimes the water level can be quite low and you could run out of water while you're trying to purge so you might need to add some water that's what i'm going to do right now add some water in there then i'm going to pull that filter out and rinse it off over the inlet side of the septic tank So some of these filters can be pretty brittle sometimes, especially these Zabels or mostly the older style Zabel filters. So you do have to be kind of careful with it. So the process for rinsing them out is just as you see, just spray them off really good with the hose. So the filter's rinsed off. We're just gonna drop it back down in here. It is directional, this filter. Most of them are. Just gonna slide it back down in there. And it's gonna click. There we go. And that's back in. All right, so just some quick information on septic tanks, if you're new to septic tanks. A septic tank is one tank typically with two manhole openings and it should have an inlet baffle T like that there and it should have an outlet baffle T or in this case we have an effluent filter now septic tanks are typically designed to have two-thirds storage capacity to one-third liquid storage capacity so inside this tank buried under the ground is a baffle wall built inside of the tank that has a hole in the center of that baffle wall that really mostly allows just the liquids to flow over to the outlet compartment of the tank. And that helps in separation of solids from liquids, but that's what the filter's for, to catch those additional small particles. So what I've done here at the sump tank, while this tank is filling up with a little additional water for the purge, I've removed the float stand which is a one inch PVC pipe in this case. And so what I've done is remove that so that the floats don't turn the pump on while I'm trying to fill the sump tank. And also at this particular location, the control panel's way up the uh, up top on the deck. Uh, we're in a floodplain here, so the panel is located out of the floodplain. So what this will allow me to do is use the float switch to turn the pump on and off to perform the purge so I don't have to run way up around the back side of the house to get to the control panel. 
while this is filling up with water, let's go over here to the uh, sand filter and open up the balancing valve boxes and the purge end boxes. So I am standing at the back of the sand filter here and these are the balancing valve boxes located down this end. And how I know that is that there is simply just a gate valve to be seen in this end. So what I'm gonna do is just go through, pull the lids off. And what I wanna do to be able to purge this system the whole idea is to consolidate all of the pump's power, pressure, flow to one lateral at a time. So what I need to do is go ahead and shut down. Watch out for some of these spiders, brown recluse maybe. So what you got to do is shut down every lateral except for one. All right, walking over here to the uh, far end of the sand filter. And... Uh, these are the purge end boxes, which purge end boxes are typically a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up all these boxes. So I've opened up all the purge boxes and what I'm gonna go ahead and do is open the ball valves. I've already opened this one. I've opened this ball valve, but pretty simple process. Just reach down in there and open it. All right, so still waiting for a little bit more water to fill up in the sump tank, and I thought I would talk about uh, this sand filter and how a sand filter is constructed. In this case, this is a bottomless sand filter, and sand filters are typically used where additional treatment is needed before that wastewater um, hits the dirt or enters the ground or um, gets close to where groundwater may be existing. We are in a floodplain here, so we do have seasonally high groundwater here. Um, so the idea, the sand filter is typically built on a relatively flat site, but they, I have installed them on some slopes. Typically there's very little ground leveling that you do, but you do want the bottom to be level. Once you have a level grade where the sand filters can be placed, you build a uh, box around it. Those boxes can be built of pressure treated lumber in this case. Sometimes stacked concrete blocks have been used. This sand filter is a bottomless sand filter, meaning there's no collection at the bottom of the sand filter. Otherwise, it would then be considered pre-treatment. But in this case, the effluent is receiving treatment as it drains down through the gravel and sand layer and enters the dirt. Sand filters will typically have a liner installed all the way around the perimeter. You can kind of just see that gray PVC liner there that liner is on the inside of the wall and drops all the way down to dirt grade. Once you have constructed the box around your level pad where the sand filter is going to be built, you install the liner, you rip, usually hand plow the bottom of the dispersal bed uh, with pick or if you can reach in with an excavator, uh, you want to rip that grade, just break it up a little bit to allow that effluent to to absorb a little bit easier. For this sand filter, I believe, based on my memory, there's a two foot thick layer of C33 concrete sand. That's a washed sand. It's relatively coarse and free draining. On top of that level sand bed, we placed a six inch layer of washed pea gravel, double washed pea gravel. On top of that layer of pea gravel, we then placed four PVC laterals with the balancing valves and the purge valves. The laterals were perforated with the drill, probably a 1 8 inch drill bit, probably 24 inches on center, I can't really remember. Those perforated laterals in the PVC pipe would, after an inspection, a squirt test, would then receive an orifice shield that clips onto the pipe to protect the orifice from the gravel, pea gravel backfill that's gonna go over the top. So after your inspection, you would snap your orifice shields on and then place about a two to three inch thick layer of additional pea gravel 
over the top. Then you would place filter fabric to cover the pea gravel prior to placement of your soil backfill. In this sand filter, there are, I think, three monitoring wells. You can kind of see there's one, there's another one back over there, and there's one over here. I believe at least one of these wells goes all the way down to the dirt sand interface, and probably another one goes down to just the gravel sand interface. But overall, that's it. It's really a pretty simple system to set up and build. They work great for small lots. They provide um, pretty good treatment of that effluent. And these are really common out here um, in this area where it's a floodplain. All right, I'm up here at the control panel, way up on the deck. Again, we're in a floodplain, so this panel is elevated pretty high. And just doing a visual inspection and checking the dose counter. Uh, we're going to do an alarm test. So there's a toggle right here. And I'm just going to activate the alarm, make sure the buzzer works, and that the light turns on. So the audible alarm does work. The light does work. The audible alarm itself sounds okay. It is making noise. Uh, typically, they're a little bit louder than that. Um, and one other thing we can do is just do a pump test to make sure the dose counter advances. So it did advance. It went from 3159 to 3160. So uh, that's it. Uh, I really don't have to mess with this anymore because I'm going to be using the float switch at the sump tank to turn the pump on and off for the purge. So I'm just going to go ahead and close this up. And if you mess with the panel at all, like you turn the breakers off because you're doing your purge, just make sure you turn those breakers back on before you leave. All right, so now my glove is really going to come in handy because I'm going to lift that bottom float switch up right here, and that's going to turn the pump on. Since we already have it prepped to purge one lateral, uh, we'll, we'll get that purge done right now. So I'm just going to grab it and tilt it up. The pump is running. And so all this pump pressure, the key thing is you really want all the pump pressure to be blowing out one lateral at a time. So I'm gonna run this for um, maybe 10, 15 seconds or so. And float switches just work by the angle change in this float switch. So as I change the angle of the float switch here by dropping it down, it turns the pump off. So it's that simple. One thing I wanted to point out here that's nice is that the float cords are nicely secured to the float stand pipe here and they're not dangling down and interfering with the float so that's something to look for just general health and uh, how everything is looking in your sump tank you should check it out make sure there's nothing loose or hanging down the wires are secured to the external splice box there so everything's looking really good we'll just go ahead and uh, turn off one balancing valve over here and open up the next one and continue this process and I'm going to get you set up over at a purge end box so you can see what that looks like when the flush comes into that purge box. All right, I'm just going to close this valve and I'm going to open the next one. All the way closed. Not too tight. You don't really have to crank on them. And then I'm going to open the next one. Pretty simple. Purging again one lateral at a time. All right, you're all set up to watch the uh, flush here. I'm gonna run over and lift that float switch and you'll see this purge happen. All right, so that was the uh, purge flush that you saw there. And what's good to notice that's happening is that the water that came out during that purge is already draining down through the aggregate. If you have purge end boxes and they're not draining after you purge, then you may want to dig up those boxes, 
uh, maybe consult with your designer or engineer, but you might need to re-gravel and reset those boxes so that that wastewater can drain back down into the gravel bed. All right, so I've completed the purge and I've closed the ball valve, the purge valve ends. So if you're doing this, definitely follow these last few steps. You wanna make sure that you return the system to where it was before you got there. And it's really important to make sure your purge ends are all shut, that the balancing valves have all been reopened. In this case, all the line lengths are the same. The balancing valves were wide open, all of them. That's something you can check on your system if you're going to be closing those gate valves down. You can kind of feel how far they were open or closed and you can try to return them to that same um, opening of the valve. What you can do is use that balancing valve cap if you needed to balance the system. You can actually perform a squirt out of the purge end boxes and adjust the gate valves as needed to get the each lateral squirting the same. And also just so there's no confusion, the ball valve is shut when the handle is perpendicular to the pipe direction. All right, and I'm back over here at the sump tank. I have uh, reinstalled the float stand and just another visual check there. The floats are not encumbered by any loose or hanging wires. The effluent filter reinstalled and I'm gonna go ahead and bolt these lids down, but uh, yeah, just follow those last few steps to make sure the system is, is back in running order. Control panels turned on. Your gate valves are open on your balancing valve end. Your purge end valves are shut. All the boxes are closed. All the lids are gonna get screwed down. Floats are back in order. So that's all really important so you don't leave something undone. All right, well, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this uh, video is helpful to someone out there that maybe has a sand filter and they're going to do a purge themselves. Um, this same technique and method, like I said before, is useful, whether it's a mound system, an at grade, a pressure distribution, whatever you might have. So, all right, well, good luck out there. Be safe, and we'll catch you next time. Over and out.